Sometimes we need to run multiple copies of the software that controls our switchers. In this case, I'm talking about the ATEM software control that's used for controlling the Blackmagic ATEM switchers. A few years ago, they actually let you run multiple copies of the software on a single, single computer, but for the last few years, they've prevented you from doing that. And sometimes it's nice to be able to do that, whether you need to control uh, two separate switchers or whether you, if you need to have the camera control up at the same time you have audio and then maybe have another copy where you actually control the switcher itself. It's nice to be able to run multiple copies of the software and as mentioned they just don't allow that. So I've got a way that will actually allow you to do that and it works not just for this software but for other software as well. Now one little caveat, this only works on Windows. I haven't found an equivalent solution for the Mac but then again I haven't looked that hard either so if somebody out there knows a way to do this sort of thing on the Mac, leave a comment in the comment section down below and others can refer to that as well. Hey everyone, my name is Doug. I run a video production company in Orem, Utah called DJP. We do live event production for things like sporting events, concerts, business conferences, those kinds of things. And as I've built the company, I've documented some of the process here on YouTube, and hopefully this information is useful to other people who are trying to do live video production as well. So, about getting multiple copies of the ATEM software running. It's actually done with a tool called Sandboxy. So, under normal circumstances, you can actually only run one copy of this ATEM software control at a time. So, if I come down here to the Start menu, choose Blackmagic Design, and then go to ATEM software control, when I click it, nothing happens because the software is already running and Blackmagic only allows one copy at a time. Kind of a problem if you need to be able to access the switcher page and the media page and the audio page at the same time or if you have two different switchers that you need to control. Say for example you might have two ATM minis or something like that. You need to be able to control multiple at once. You typically need to have two different computers. So I'm going to show you today how to actually run multiple copies on the same computer. Save you a little bit of Save you a little bit of equipment, a little bit of hassle, a little bit of headache. So I'm using a piece of software that's called Sandboxy. So if we go to the, their website here, this is owned by Sophos, the antivirus company, security company. And they've just made this software actually free. It used to be a paid product, but it's now been made open source, and so anybody can get it. Uh, with some restrictions, there are some export restrictions due to some of the security that's in here. But it, you can download it for free, so just go to the sandboxy.com, link below, and click on the download button, and have, there's a form that you have to fill out in order to download it. But just, yeah, just take care of that, and, and you'll be able to get the software. So once you've got it installed, I'm not going to walk you through the process of that because it's kind of lengthy because they actually have a tutorial that they want to want to run you through. Um, once you've got it, so once you've got it installed, you can actually launch the software, and then within the software itself, you can right-click on this default sound box and say Run Sandbox, and then say run from start menu and that's going to pop up a copy of what's on your start menu you go to programs blackmagic design atem switchers atem software control and it'll take a second for it to come up but this copy that's loading is actually running in a sandbox what that means is everything that it does to your system is isolated and it's it's actually uh, stored in a separate area from where it normally would be. So if you download a file inside the sandbox, it's not actually stored on your computer in the place you would think it would be. It's stored in a holding area. And then once the software shuts down, you can either say, keep those changes or undo them. And one of the benefits of doing this is that the two copies of the software are not allowed to talk to one another to tell each other, basically, I'm already running, so don't allow another copy to run. Putting it in the sandbox actually prevents the two from uh, interfering with one another. So here we go. I actually have two copies of ATEM software control. So now I can come over here to say the camera tab, modify the camera, and then I've also got this other copy here so I can use that to switch between the various cameras as well. So, or if you want to, you could come into into one of these, go file, and then choose connection, and then choose another switcher if you happen to have multiple of them. So on the same computer, you're running two copies of the software. Now, because this one here is sandboxed, any changes you make here are not going to be saved. So if you change preferences, change configuration, even if you go up to file and say 
save as to save the switcher setup, those files are not going to actually be committed to your computer. They're isolated, they're sandboxed from making any of those sort of changes. So if you're gonna make, if you want changes to be committed, you would actually do that in this main copy running on your main computer. Now this concept can actually be extended a little bit further and if you wanted to run more than two copies, you can do that. So you would just go to the same, through the same process again, right click on uh, that default sandbox, choose the program you want to run, another copy of ATEM software control or whatever you want, and you just keep doing that. The benefit to doing this over some of the other solutions that are out there, like some people suggested uh, installing and setting up a virtual machine. Virtual machines take a lot of your resources. They eat up a lot of your memory, they eat up a lot of your CPU, and it's just a lot of extra overhead that you don't have to, to use up uh, in order to run a second copy of the software. And addition, additionally, uh, most copies of Microsoft Windows don't even have that feature, the virtual machine feature built into it. It's something you have that only comes in the professional edition uh, or you have to go get, get a third party piece of software. And even then you're supposed to buy a second copy of Windows when you run inside the virtual machine. So this solution is much easier, much more lightweight on your resources and allows you to do this without having to tie up a ton of hardware. You don't have to, you don't have multiple computers, you don't have to have extra RAM, you don't have to have extra disk space, any of that kind of stuff in order to in order to make this work. So you can move those onto two separate monitors if you want or work on one single monitor, however you want to do it. It, it works it works great. Now, since I'm talking about Sandboxy, I might, might also mention that this is a great uh, security thing. So if you have to download a piece of software, download and run a piece of software that you might not necessarily trust, you can run it inside of Sandboxy and then it any changes that it attempts to make to your computer are not really stored. They're virtualized, they're sandboxed, if you will. And so you're able to run a piece of software that you, you don't otherwise trust on, on your computer. So anyway, so that's about it. You know, it's actually a pretty simple tip, nice quick video for you. So if you have any questions about this, you can leave those in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to try and answer. I, I am not an expert on the Sandboxy software. I've used it for this purpose for quite a long time, but I haven't really used it for much else. So I'll try to answer your questions if, as best I can, but again, I'm not an expert in that area. So if somebody has a solution that works on Mac, please speak up in the comment section. Let, let, let us know. Uh, I'm sure there are many people that would like to know how to do this on the Mac side as well. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I am going to be doing video production related content at least once a week moving forward. And I'm going to be doing both things on the higher end, more technical, as well as uh, starting a new series about the introdu uh, introductory topics related to doing live video production uh, as well. So please consider subscribing. Uh, if you're running your own video production business, I've got a website that I've created called crewaxis.com, link below, and it allows you to keep track of your, your events, your employees, your contractors, your equipment, your finances, uh, all the, everything. It, basically everything you need to run your business is there on the site, and I do have free versions of the site available for anybody who wants to try it out. So, Thanks everyone for watching, and have a fantastic day.